Minority Friday on 670 KBOI. We talk to Democrats about the latest news in the Idaho legislature. Now here are Paul, Jay, and Chris on 670 KBOI. Top of the morning, uh, KBOI News Time is 8.39. It's a Minority Friday. Representative Hyatt Clock is in the House from District 16. House seat B. Hi, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. Said it's been a great week. Why is that? Well, I actually got something through the House. Hey. And because it is Minority uh, Friday, I can say that that is one of the uh, things that keeps me coming back is when I see something go through the House. Mm -hmm. And this one was, actually there were two. One was uh, a a, a Senate concurrent resolution. I got to get the words right because each one for me is something else. Uh, For Gene Harris. This was to recognize Gene Harris's art, his contribution to the community. And I was particularly happy to do this because then from 2002 to 2005, I was the chairman of the Gene Harris Jazz Festival. Fantastic. And it was, it was great to be able to do that. And the other little thing, I had a resolution, a House concurrent resolution, uh, recognizing legal immigrants and the contributions that they've made to Idaho and the country. And that passed the House unanimously and it's on its way to the Senate. So they were willing to recognize legal immigrants at least. Correct. Yeah. That, that was... Uh, one of the things that I learned in talking to some of the immigrants that are here legally, they seem to feel that they're being lumped together with the undocumented workers, and they kind of resent it, you know, having gone through the years that it took them to get here. They, they just they want people to understand that they're here legally, they want to become a citizen of the United States, and they love this country. They love the fact that they actually can find freedom here. What uh, were some of the biggest contributions that were mentioned? Well, the uh, when we think about all of the immigrants, and this, this resolution recognizes all the immigrants, we talked about immigrants that came here in the 1800s that settled Idaho and that developed Idaho. Before it even became a state, there were immigrants in Idaho making sure that we could become a state. Some of the other, they weren't big contributions, but some of the small contributions, we had uh, three people testify at the hearing, and one is Kabroom, who owns a restaurant on State Street, mm-hmm. and he's from, um, uh, I think, Eritrea, Eritrea. Mm-hmm. and he, he brought Ethiopian food and opened a restaurant, and it's doing great. So those little success stories are the things that you, know, you always want to hear about. You want to hear about people that come here and actually make it. Yesterday in the House Ways and uh, Means Committee, a couple of uh, Democratic representatives from small towns, uh, Sally Toon from Gooding, Paulette Jordan from Plummer, introduced legislation to encourage qualified teachers to work in rural school districts through a student loan forgiveness program. How do you feel about this? Oh, I think it, I think it's a a good move. I think it's great for people who have gone through uh, and got their teaching certificate and want to get a job, but they're loaded down with debt. And so they think about, do I go into teaching or do I go into something else to pay off the debt? If we can come up with a program that helps teachers forgive some of their debt while they're teaching in a rural community, which is the hardest to recruit for, I think that's a great thing. The stats are staggering. 75% of all school districts are rural. 37% of those districts started the school year with unfilled classroom positions. Yeah. No, it's a uh, topic that we talk about a lot on the Education Committee as far as getting rural schools really up and running back to when there were, you know, in some of the rural areas like Kellogg and uh, some of the areas up north that were known for their mining activities, the mines aren't there anymore. And so a lot of people have left, and the schools are still an important part. Public schools are what really, I think, are the backbone of this country. Everyone should get an opportunity to get an education. And so the rural incentives, there's another rural uh, incentive that uh, Superintendent Yabara brought forward 
and it passed in the committee and on the floor, starting a rural resource uh, center or district to help little schools that need certain, say, say for instance, you want a school psychologist, but you only need a school psych psychologist for a day. Right. Rather than hire one full time, this resource center would make it available a, a school psychologist for the day. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it seems like a pretty good idea. I, I, there's also something going through uh, uh, the legislature to fund uh, buildings for higher education. Uh, and well, first of all, tell us about that. Well, that, that's part of uh, the governor's plan to uh, uh, allow some of the universities to build new buildings. There's a couple of going up at PSU, one that I know of for sure. The uh, I think Micron was one of the public uh, or the private partners in that, and it was for help me on this, Paul. I can't remember the name of the building. Um, it, it, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's all right. We're all in the same boat, right? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but they. But it's important. Boise, yeah, Boise State has been very good at getting private people to help build mm -hmm. buildings on campus. They've yeah. done a very good job. Um, we need to take a break. KBOI News Time, eight forty-five. Final check. Right now, it's from District Fifth or Sixteen. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, we've got a, a multi-use stadium being planned right now. Correct. And uh, some of that uh, is is going through the legislature right now what uh, what's being said well I, i'm more familiar with it uh, because of my role at the greater boise auditorium district okay I, I haven't seen anything in the legislature yet but there is it, it is becoming uh, a hot topic for boise and its growth mm -hmm. i personally believe that um, a multi-use stadium would would be a an asset for Boise. This would give us an opportunity to have baseball games, soccer, concerts, and, and it would be in an area, a part of town, that is ripe for development. So everything that could be built around it, it would be anchored by the uh, multi-use stadium. It, it, it was announced this week that surplus general funds would continue to be funneled to transportation projects in Idaho for another five years under a newly introduced plan. No secret, the roads in Idaho suck in some places. The infrastructure is not good. We got bridges going out. We got miles and miles of roads and not many people to pay for them. Is this a good deal? Uh, no. Not it, a good deal. Not a good deal. Uh, I, I think the... Uh the transportation issue will be the going home issue for the legislature. I think you're In right. other words, once we come up with a, uh, a compromise and a bill to address a lot of that issue, we'll call, uh, we'll call it a session. Until then, right now we're hoping, or at least that's the rumor around the legislature, is that we'd be out of there by the 24th. Right. Uh, I... I'm not ready to bet the house on that. The, well, well, how are you going to pay for it? Fuel taxes? Registration? Well, it has to be a, a combination of all of them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I personally w hope doesn't happen, because this, hap this was a possibility a couple of weeks ago, was that we would take the money from state police and funnel it over to transportation right, to the tune of $17 million. I, I personally would like to see that 17 million stay where it is, and I believe it, it will stay there. And then we'll come up with another way to be able to fund the transportation issue because that is very important. 262 million dollars, a big number. Yeah, it's huge. A smaller number, but still a big number. The state uh, reached a three and a half million dollar settlement with the uh, Idaho Education Network. How do you feel about that? It, I, my feeling changed actually after we had a presentation earlier this week from uh, a network that we have in the state that is called IRON, and I can't remember what the acronym stands for, but it, it has to do with the backbone of a delivery system, mm -hmm. and it seems to be um, connected right now to higher education, uh, some private organizations, and the IHL. I asked the question, why isn't this being used for 
all of our all of our high schools, all of our elementary schools, all of our public schools, if we have a system in place that is this good, why did we go with this other system to begin with? I, I didn't get an answer that I, I really liked. I mean, there there's a lot of, uh, well, we had to do it because of this or that. And the fact that we're paying out money over a suit that should never have happened to begin with, I find that uh, a, a little ironic. You and I already discussed this briefly uh, uh, during the commercial, but uh, nothing brand new this year about pre-K, except there was a presentation and there's a little hope at the end of it. It, it was great. It, we had a presentation, this was probably uh, in February, February 20th, February 22nd, something like that, before the Education Committee. We had 18 speakers, and everybody followed the script. They only spoke for two or three minutes. Sometimes when you have to get the hook out, you know, you have to be careful of who's talking. But we had business community represented. We had the educational community represented, uh, a number of nonprofits, another children organizations. And the person who wrapped up the, the session was Lieutenant Governor Little. And he was an advocate for pre-K and early childhood education, which made me very happy. Another reason it was a good week, Paul. But you're thinking maybe that uh, a bill might come forth next year. Next year. We, we have a couple of bills in the hopper. We just weren't able to get anything out into uh, the committee structure at this point. So we are going to try again next year. Just got to keep trying. As Governor Andrews told me, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Yeah, and, and we're kind of hoping the session doesn't turn into a marathon. We all are. Yeah, yeah, because it would, uh, it, it, back in the old days when, when half of the legislature were farmers, the weather forecast for this week in the 60s, they'd be, uh, they'd be wrapping stuff up <laughs> and going home and getting ready to plow. Right. Yeah, and, not so much anymore. No, no, but... They do want to get out of here by the 24th, and I'll do everything I can to help them. 24th be two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. All right, Senator. That means? Representative. Representative High Clock. If you want to promote me, that's yeah, fine. Promote. <laughs> Representative High Clock from uh, District 16 has been our guest. Uh, hi, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. It's 8.50.